Hey there, my name is Gardner, and I've been running my YouTube channel, Gardner Bryant, for over seven years. I've made a career out of video editing on Linux, and I wanted to share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned with you. So let's talk about frame rate. Now, we've already covered frame rate a little bit uh, when we were talking about the uh, compositing of different clips of different frame rates, but there's a lot more that we can actually talk about here. Frame rate is a highly subjective topic, and it's one that people are very passionate about, but it's also one that a lot of people get wrong most of the time. There is no one be all end all right answer when it comes to frame rate. Uh, it all depends on what you're trying to convey. But objectively speaking, each standard frame rate has a different use case that makes sense when applied in the appropriate context. First, let's talk about the lowest frame rate that's commonly used in North America, 23.98 frames per second. This is typically used in cinematic applications and often used in big budget movies. This frame rate has a somewhat painterly feel. It lends itself well to a more dramatic aesthetic that films often go for and tends to be associated with the movies. Films that use higher frame rates often feel cheap when compared to movies made at 23.98 frames per second. Then there's 29.95 frames per second. It might seem like, what's the big deal? Uh, six more frames per second? Doesn't seem like much. But the fact of the matter is, those six frames per second can be felt, even if they're hard to articulate the exact feeling that it gives you. It adds a different feel to the footage. Less blurry, less cinematic. This frame rate is often associated with having a feel of a soap opera, for example. 29.95 frames per second might seem like a rather arbitrary number. Why not just 30? Well, it turns out that originally broadcast television in the United States was aired at 30 frames per second. When they wanted to add color to the signal, they had to find that bandwidth somewhere, and they reduced the uh, 30 frames per second down to 29.95 to add the color signal to the broadcast television standard. And it's just kind of stuck around since then. So if it's rooted in analog television signal, why do we still use 29.95 frames per second? Or 30 for that matter, why not 60? Well, since most screens nowadays run at at least 60 frames per second or 60 hertz, well, 30 FPS makes a lot of sense because it's exactly half of your television or your monitor's uh, standard refresh rate. But remember, there's always a trade-off. Just like you have a horizontal and a vertical resolution, you're also going to have temporal resolution, and that's what frame rate is. The higher your temporal resolution or frame rate, the more data has to be stored. And video signals are notoriously large. More frames per second, higher resolutions, all adds up to more data that needs to be stored. Uh, and so 30 is a pretty good compromise. But next up, we have 60. This is generally used for video games. Broadly speaking, when it comes to frame rates in video games, you're going to end up with a more responsive feeling game when you have more frames per second. And among gamers, 60 is pretty much the minimum that you want to aim for. But again, it's all about feeling. And you'll notice that as I've covered each of these different frame rates, I've talked about feeling. Feeling is the most important thing here because frame rates are entirely subjective. While there are standard applications for each of these frame rates, your use case might demand one over another, even if it's non-traditional. For example, if you're making comedy videos, uh, you might want to max out your frame rate as much as possible in order to give your video the feel of being a soap opera. Or maybe you like to play video games on stream and you're playing at 60 frames a second in your game, uh, so it might make sense to have your webcam update at 60 frames a second as well. Now, I guess the last question is, what about frame rates above 60? Well, if you're talking about video games, that's a common occurrence. But if you're talking about live action, well, then you're getting into the realm of slow motion photography. If you capture live action footage at 120 or 240 or even higher frames per second, and then you take each of those frames and play them back at 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, you're going to end up actually having much more temporal resolution than uh, you would if you were playing it back at real speed. And that's where you start to see that frame rate really is a temporal resolution. So what frame rate are you going to use in your project? It all comes down to feeling and aesthetic. Hopefully this video has helped answer some questions and now you're more informed to make a good decision for your project. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all are enjoying this series and have checked out the previous ones and the few more left to come. With all that said, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.